wanted to talk to you real quick about um, the tow vehicle that we're going to go look at. Uh, Martin's been keeping an eye, eye out on Craigslist, uh, just the surrounding areas, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, College Station, that sort of thing, to uh, basically get a prime candidate so that we can go look at the, the vehicle. And we've been looking at uh, Chevy Tracker, Geo Tracker, and Suzuki, Suzuki Sidekick. Um, hopefully, we'll be filming from that geo tracker that we're going to go look at it it's a 90 geo tracker two door four by four automatic and um the list that we compiled has six points one of which was being that it's an automatic automatic because I, I don't know how to drive a stick i'm not opposed to learning how to drive a stick however with my left ankle being subpar at best <laughs> It's much better now, but I'm afraid that there are going to be days where I need to drive the Geo to work and I'm having a lot of ankle pain and I don't want to have to press down on the clutch. Um, I, I also feel like it might be unsafe because I don't have the strength in that ankle that I need. Um, so that's the main reason why we're getting uh, an automatic. Uh, also, we wanted to be able to tow four wheels down um, for several reasons. Martin, you want to? Well don't want a tow dolly because you don't want to have to worry about unhooking the tow dolly and dealing with the tow dolly while you're parked somewhere. Uh, we wanted it to be small or you know be lightweight because we do drive a GMC motorhome which isn't very large and so um, I'd like for the profile to be short as well. I mean we're 26 feet so um, adding a small vehicle on the back. Adding approximately 10 more feet. 10 more feet right so I just wanted it to be um, Lightweight and short and small and just convenient. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're limited on weight with the GMC. I mean, you are with any motorhome, and so the lighter, the, the better. Bottom, bottom line is the lighter is better. And then the lighter the vehicle, the more stuff you're okay to stick in the vehicle. If you start with a heavy vehicle, and then you put a bunch of stuff in the vehicle, you're just pulling that much more weight, which puts more strain on your transmission. Wanted it to be four by four, four wheel drive, because we want to go on different trails. We would like to be able to pull <laughs> the motor home, give it a little tug if we have, if need be. If need be. Uh, which when last when we went to the beach for a travelers camp fest, we ended up having to have someone help us two times. And we, if we had our own vehicle, we could have done it ourselves, um, just because we just needed a little a little bit of tugging. Um, a little bit of that 4x4 four four power just to get the wheels Because going. the GMC is only two wheel, or, uh, front wheel drive. Right. It has an open differential so you don't get as much torque on the front tires. So you can get stuck pretty easy in some soft sand. Uh, we also wanted it to have a hard top. Uh, personal choice for personal reasons. Like um, I don't want to have to deal with any rips or tears. I also don't intend to want to take the, the top off. I have no desire to do that um, so also we wanted the hard top because we are going to use the uh, back portion of the vehicle kind of like a mini garage not really but kind of like we'd like to store our cast iron stuff in the dutch oven back there um, and our outdoor grill setup whatever tools we're going to do and parts. tools and parts because in the gmc we don't have a lot of storage we don't have um uh, gosh what are those dark things called underneath storage storage bays storage bays we don't have any storage bays so this will be helpful for us to have like a little area back there that we can store which goes back to what martin was saying about the vehicle being lightweight because we intend to put some weight in it so that's a another reason and then also cost because the geo trackers are not like in high demand for <laughs> Well, actually, they are. Oh, really? I don't really think they were in high demand for like the general population. Like for people who were trying to tow a vehicle, I thought they're, they were. They're in high demand for people that like to off road. Uh, oh, that's right, right. Which brings us to. I so, suppose so it, it has a multi clientele that are looking for it. So you have people that are looking for a lightweight vehicle to tow and people that want to go off road. And so, therefore, that's why you're paying X amount for an older vehicle. Right, and I guess I didn't really put that into you know factor into my uh, list, but I certainly could have been. Uh, is uh, you know number seven being we did not want a vehicle that had been driven off road, which is why we're going to go see this vehicle because not only did it hit all those points, but some of the cool things about it or the attributes is it's been stored indoors for the past two years, uh, which.
which is great because and it hasn't been beat up by the elements. Also, this is an older gentleman who bought the vehicle. He was going to use it on a farm that he purchased, but when he purchased the farm, it came with some other vehicle that he was gonna use. So, um, it's been like a project vehicle for him and he's tooled around with it a little bit, but he hasn't really done anything with it for two years besides drive it here and there. Um, so, he has not been off-roading in it. And to our knowledge, from the way that it looks and from the pictures that we've seen, it doesn't look like that it was ragged out or anything and prior another, to him getting it. And another thing with Geo trackers or Chevy trackers, Suzuki side sidekicks, they like to do lots of modifications. So they like to put lift kits, bigger tires, different front ends, different rear ends, new transfer cases. And so with it being all original, I don't have to have a list of all the stuff that's been changed. I can go by the manufacturer's recommendation of a replacement part, which is kind of the same reason we like the GMC, is it's original and simple and just not a whole bunch of extra add-ons that you can also break. Right, and especially because Mark and I aren't really mechanically inclined. Um, we do know how to do some things. Of course, Mark knows how to do more than I do. He's, but he's been teaching me some things. Um, but this is going to be helpful for us, like Mark said, because then you aren't, you know, you don't have as much guesswork into what you need to do to replace things when things do break down, because things will break down and will need to be fixed. And so the, it has. Uh, also, uh, he said that it has excellent tires, new Michelin tires. I, he said he didn't put them on, but they were new put on when he bought the vehicle two years ago and then he hasn't like again I said he doesn't really do much with it so he hasn't been driving it so he hasn't been putting miles on the tires nor miles on the engine which is good and kind of not good at the same time as far as like you know we know if you let a vehicle sit that things do start to grow to break down so with that being said he has recently within the last month dropped the gas tank and cleaned the gas tank out and then replaced a fuel pump um, because he wasn't, uh, the engine wasn't, it was turning over, but it wasn't staying fired up. So, those are good points to me, I think. Uh, so, um, two things that, that we're a little concerned about and hopefully aren't going to be a big deal when we get there, but a possible transmission leak, uh, something that he did say that he worked on and he fixed. There was a, a gasket that he replaced, a seal that he replaced, and he said that helped tremendously, but that there is still a little bit. So, I don't know, we'll see about that when we get there. And then also, it has AC, but the AC does not work. And he has not really uh, fiddled around with it. He said that there's, he thinks it's gonna be a really easy fix, but because he wasn't driving the vehicle very much, it wasn't a concern for him, and I can understand that. So, and really not that big of a concern for us either. You think it would be in the Texas heat, but the whole point of getting the towed vehicle is so that, you know, we can go to better climate climates, especially in the summer. Like, man, Texas heat with the humidity is brutal, especially if you don't have AC. So, <clears throat> we're, we are gonna look at that. If we do purchase the vehicle, we are gonna look at um, what needs to be fixed for the AC. Just It's not, a, it's sure. not something that has to be fixed right now. Right, and it's not a make, make or break, you know, situation for getting the vehicle, you know. Transmission leak? Maybe. I, I don't know. We have looked into it and we have a mechanic friend that we talked it over with and he told us about how much it would be, which I believe he said would be about a thousand or so if we needed if to. If it's have, a certain seal. Yeah. Um, so. One seal's labor intensive, about eight hours labor. Uh, anywhere else in the transmission is going to be a lot less. The guy does have a lift and uh, I've spent. <laughs> pretty good amount of time speaking to the guy on the phone he's a talker the older dude and he he uh, just really liked to share a lot of information with me about what he did and how he got his farm and neat guy I've had, I really enjoyed talking to him and uh, so I hope that we have a good you know we've had a good rapport so I hope that when we get there I have I've gotten the impression that he's gonna be like super like helpful and forthcoming. forthcoming he has a lift he told me he's that's how he put got the gas tank down uh, he said he's not a mechanic but he's he's been doing a lot of things his whole life with he's vehicles. a hot rod guy right he's a hot rod guy that's what he said I, I asked him so i the pictures look like it's been stored indoors hasn't been stored indoors and like our whole conversation had been like you know pretty carefree and everything and it wasn't real serious and then all of a sudden he was like oh all my vehicles are stored indoors. 
Like he was like really, really adamant about that point. He went on about his hot rods and everything. So, I mean, he takes care of his vehicles. So that's, you know, really excellent. I do hope that this one is the winner. Also, it's red and I like that. <laughs> I like that it's gonna be red, not like some of the ones that we've looked at, the Suzuki's and the Geo trackers, Chevy trackers, they have some funky paint jobs. <laughs> So anyway, but hopefully uh, we do get the vehicle and hopefully we'll be having uh, a video from each of us driving it and telling you how our first impressions of it and how it feels. It's going to be very different because uh, currently for the past seven years I've been driving this vehicle which is a 2006 Nissan Murano. So definitely bigger than the Geo Tracker. Geo Tracker is like a little, like a roller skate. <laughs> With a sewing machine engine. With a sewing machine engine, right. So. Uh, yeah. No offense to all the Geo Tracker people out there. I mean, clearly we're going to look at one. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I think that's it for now. Anything well, you want to add, Martin? Well, I think the biggest thing for me is he said there's no rust, which is a big thing with these because people off road in them um, or up north or anywhere in the snow. So, finding one that's that old with this few of miles and no rust will be a winner in my book. Anyway, we're headed to San Antonio. We will uh, check in with y'all later. And I thought, you know, really quickly, let's let's see what Leo's up to back here. Hi, guy. You along for the ride, buddy? Are you oh, excited, dog. bud? Yeah. <laughs> I hope you can see this. There are four ducks. Four dogs and a duck. <laughs> Four ducks. In this suburban. Four dogs and a duck. There were five dogs. I'm sure. Are that shit? And yeah. There were five dogs. There's seven. Seven dogs. First nine. What? Aww. It's awesome. And a pizza. The best part's the duck. <laughs> Only in Texas. <laughs>